everyone and welcome to the General Hospital recap for October 5th. As always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos or recaps. Let's get right to it. At Curtis's, Curtis and Jordan are happy together and Stella walks in on them slightly involved. Just a little bit, a little bit there, a little bit. Stella has news. She knows she's been in Curtis's way staying at his place. It's time for her to think about leaving since her health has improved. She's not going all the way back to Baltimore though. She's staying in Port Charles. She got a job and all. Yay! <laughs> She's working at General Hospital now. She saw Felix at church and he told her one of the social workers was retiring and she applied and got the job. Jordan congratulates her and leaves. She has to go to work. Stella brought a bottle of, I think, whiskey to toast her new job. He's happy that she's doing stuff with her life and, you know, really setting herself up in Port Charles. She doesn't think she'll ever have another Marcus in her life though. There's no more love for her. Like she's, but she's not saying it in a bad way. Like that's just her life. Curtis is so grateful that she sacrificed to raise him and his brother. He thinks maybe she's romanticized Marcus and that's why she can never like see herself with anyone else. And she's like, no, he had his faults like anyone else. And he wants her to at least be open to the possibility of seeing someone else again. Right, the wind is messing up everything I have going here. At the PCPD, Maxie drops Nathan off at work. Apparently people have been sending stuff to his work and women are coming to give him gifts. Maxie thinks this is all a bit out of control. He thinks Jordan's gonna fire him because she texted him to be here. She's sorry that Spinelli ruined everything. Maybe they could go to Portland and Nathan doesn't expect her to fix his problem and blames himself for revealing himself at the party. Like he didn't have to come running in and announce that he's asked Manland they're going to get all the gifts moved out before Jordan gets back so they're able to do that Jordan comes into work she needs to speak with Nathan now and Nathan apologizes that he wasn't upfront about this ass man lander stuff it got totally out of control and she wishes he would have come to her before this all blew up and she says as long as he can assure her it will interfere with his work then everything's fine he is not being fired yay but the reason she wanted to talk with him is because she needs advice <laughs> She has a situation with her boyfriend's aunt and she needs help from Ask Man Landers. She tells him how Stella won't back off and he asks if she ever had anyone in her life that she was in love with. She tells him about Marcus and he says maybe she's grieving her sacrifice or afraid to love again. In Russia on the plane, Griffin blames himself for Ava going to the clinic. That's why he came to find her and he's really, really sorry. He doesn't want to lose this, their friendship. That's what drove him to find the clinic. He knows that it's not enough for her, but it's all he has. And she says it's enough. The idea he was interested gave her hope that she could be the person she once was, but she'll never be able to go back. She'll never be that person again. Healing her face won't help heal herself and she has to focus on that. She has to own who she she is now. He says what she did for that stranger was selfless. He asked if she helped him because she cared about helping him or because she gave up on herself. She says she was curious about him. She absolutely didn't give up on herself. After seeing how he was being treated, she decided to help him. She mentions him writing the phone number down, the pen incident, telling the doctor the number. He's really proud of her for saving that man and herself. She asks how he knew where to start looking and he says Sonny helped. He mentions the mysterious phone call on Sonny's private line and Ava puts two and two together with patient six number, who is Sonny, to patient six. Griffin thinks it's a big leap to say that the phone call came from patient six. Ava thinks it's no more improbable than what happened, him coming to save her, this, that, and the other thing. The timing does line up. Why would patient six have complete faith that Sonny of all people could come get him? And she thanks Griffin again for finding her. At the magic court, Sonny comes to see Carly. She feels he has to tell her something. He has a possible game changer. What game? Brick is coming by with a lead on the call from Russia. She really likes Brick, apparently, <laughs> and possibly has a role for him. Oscar and Joss come in. They'd like to go to the local sports game without a bodyguard. There's security there and they want to sit with their friends. Carly says the guard can sit a few rows back, but that's not good enough for Jocelyn. Sunny goes over and sits with her. A guard is like a seatbelt. No one is probably coming for her, but he's trying to eliminate that one in a million chance. Oscar's on board for it. He thinks it's fine. Carly gets a picture of Jocelyn and Oscar together and offers to send the picture to his mom. He's like, okay, but we have to go right now so we can do that later. 
Carly really wants to meet Oscar's mom, and if Jocelyn is going to date, she'd want her to date a guy like Oscar. They're really cute together. Brick arrives. Sonny asks how his investigation has been going. He traced the call to a cell phone, but the bills are paid through a Swiss bank, but it doesn't seem fishy because all of the other numbers seem legit. They're to very rich and high-standing members of society, so it's just weird, but it's not weird weird. Sunny thinks maybe the call did come from Ava and they do settle on it being from Ava. Carly has one more thing to ask Brick. She wants surveillance on Nell with all the bells and whistles. Sunny thinks that's a mistake and they decide to hold off for now. Maxie and Amy come in and sit together at the Metro Court. Maxie donated all the gifts to the kids at the hospital. The tweets are pouring in about Ask Man Landers and some of them are like bashing Maxie a little bit. Maxie asks if Amy's bothered that Nathan is reaching this level of success and the status on work that she's doing. Nope, Amy's kind of actually offended by the idea. It was never about fame for Amy. She's happy, she's getting the funding for her brother's surgery, that's all she wants. Amy asked Maxie what it's like. She's so used to being the queen and the center of attention. She was the queen in high school and now look at her. Maxie says that she was an outcast in high school because of her heart and she had to be perfect all the time and it was so stressful and she had to this, that, that, always pick out the right outfit and have makeup on point. And Amy's like, yeah, I don't see it like that. She's succeeded at everything. Like, what was their, what? At Perks, Jocelyn and Oscar had decided to leave the game and hang out. They don't really get football. And honestly, I've been there. I went to every high school football game because I was in the color guard. Well, I didn't, like, have to have to be there, but it was just, like, fun Friday nights. And the majority of the time, it was just talking and semi-paying. Are we in the lead? Yeah, okay. That's the part. As soon as I would understand, they'd switch sides, and then I'd get all confused again. Jocelyn says the only thing Jackson and Sonny agree on is her being protected. Oscar doesn't know who his dad is, and his mom never really wants to talk about him. All right. I have one thing. I love Oscar to death. I love the storyline. I love all that. But sometimes the way Oscar talks doesn't sound like a real teenager at all. There's someone out there who made me. I'm walking around with his genetic code. Maybe he passed out a gene that made me like hanging out with you. We're bordering on Edward Cullen levels of dialogue here, okay? Some of his lines are just weird. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Oscar turned out to be like a 140 year old vampire disguised as a teenager. I really wouldn't. And that end scene. Maxie doesn't resent Nathan's success at all. Amy says she needs to find a way to deal with it. Go back to work and ride it out. Don't do anything impulsive. Who are you again? Like, excuse me? Excuse, like, who are you? <laughs> Maxie's life has changed a million different ways because her husband chose to help her and now Amy's going to explain how she should live her life to her like I'm honestly just as offended as Maxie honestly I don't like when people tell me I live my life I mean nobody really does anymore but like Nathan actually made Jordan feel compassion for Stella he is good so it's really not gonna be like fraud because he's really turning in to ask Manlanders. Curtis is glad Stella is sticking around. Carly knows Sonny's right. Michael has to discover this whole Nell stuff for himself. Then they talk about Ava. They're thinking Ava hopes one day Carly and Sonny will forget what she did to Morgan, but they'll never forget, ever. Exactly. Oscar's afraid to look for his dad. What if he wants nothing to do with him or is embarrassed by him? Jocelyn asks, what if we could find your dad? Would you want to? Ava can't wait to see her daughters. Griffin thinks they'll be proud of her. Maybe she's becoming a little good and she lays her head against him and honestly, same, but nope, 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 mm-mm. Oh, I'm sorry, am I obstructing the nope? This stuff makes me feel like I'm 14 again. I used to drink this stuff religiously when I was 14. I was at the store by myself, which is never good because I need to be supervised. And I bought a four pack of Frappuccinos, mocha, because is there any other kind? I should try the coffee kind because like, anyway, that's not what this recap's about. Thank you so much for watching today's recap and I will see you in two seconds for the next one. And I hope you have a great day and be on the lookout for a patio chat Sunday morning. All right, bye.